flat. Bravest men in the army. For unexcelled bravery in the face of enemy fire, for courage and daring that has inspired men of all ranks of the 2nd Armored Division, for being the first men of an invading army to cross the German Rhine in 140 years, I award to the captain and to each of his men the Silver Star. And what the old man means, Mrs. Stringer, is that they're the bravest damn men in the army. As I, Anne Stringer of the United Press, stood there with the colonel, 15 bearded, sodden, and grimy men stepped forward to receive their awards from Brigadier General T.D. White, commander of the 2nd Armored Division. It was bitter cold and rain streamed down their mud-flecked face. Yeah, look at those guys, will you? Yeah. Fidgeting like schoolboys. Can you imagine their being nervous now after what they've been through? Crossing the Adolf Hitler Bridge. Perfect targets against a raging fire. The Germans throwing everything at them and... And the whole bridge, mind, and ready to go off at any moment. Yeah, exactly. Would you like to meet these men, Mrs. Stringer? Oh, what do you think? All right. Captain. Yes, sir. Well, Captain, have you got a minute? Somebody here would like to meet you. Or, uh... Should it be the other way around? <laughs> oh, the other way around. But definitely. <laughs> well, here's your man, Mrs. Stringer. The guy who led the patrol across the bridge. Captain, this is Ann Stringer of UP. How do you do, Captain? Glad to meet you, Mrs. Stringer. Gosh, boy's getting almost civilized. <laughs> Captain, I'd like to hear the full story of that crossing. Sure thing, Mrs. Stringer. From the beginning, please, Captain. Well, first the orders came down from the command post. And you kind of had a feeling it was something big, didn't you? Yeah, I had an idea it'd be something tough. Well, that certainly wasn't any idle hunt. No, ma'am, but as I was saying, the orders came down. It was just afternoon, then. I got my patrol together and we hustled off to the post for briefing. Gentlemen, you are about to cross the Rhine. Captain, tonight you will take your patrol to the Adolf Hitler Bridge at Urdingen. Yes, sir. At approximately 10.30, you will start up the ramp and work your way across the bridge. Any specific objective, sir? We want to find out how heavily the bridge is mined, how heavily the bridge is guarded. I understand, sir. Now, Captain, you are to cut every demolition rigging you find. And, of course... Kill every Jerry you can. All right. Here are your maps, Captain. That bridge is 1,400 feet long. I don't need to tell you that every foot is dangerous. It's mined, ready to blow up at any moment. And the Germans are raking it with fire. So, good luck, men, and Godspeed. They'll need it. afternoon, Mrs. Stringer, we studied those maps. The men knew their lives could depend on how well they knew them. Then about 9.30, we started out. It was dark as pitch, and sniper fire was cutting the grass in the us. Spread out, men. Take they, cover. They spotted us, Captain. Get next to those buildings. Work your way along, and when we get close enough, we'll make a break for it. All right, men, run. Come on, guys. Come on. We made it, Captain. No one hit. But, boy, those Jerry's really got a Z eye. Yeah, we made it. Now all we got to do is get across the bridge. It was exactly 10.25 then, Mrs. Stringer. Our artillery was giving us hot support, but... Jerry Guns had set a terrific fire in a house just behind the bridge. And the fire made you a perfect target, eh? Like ducks in a shooting gallery. And you should have heard the w shells whistling around our ears. All right, men, get going up the ramp, now. Down, men, down, every one of you. We gotta figure out something. They'll mow us down. Hey, Captain, I got an idea. Good, we could use one now. Why can't we duck over the side of the ramp and catwalk along that railing? Yeah, we stick our feet in the palings and work our way across. I'll go first. Come on, men. All right, men, come on. But watch your step. 
It's a 75-foot drop, and those cobblestones are mighty hard. Hold your men, Sergeant. What's the trouble, Captain? No trouble. Much. These damn palings end with a ramp. Uh-oh. Now I'll have to get right out on that bridge. All right, men, I'll take Brown, Lodowitz, McQuinn, Ross, and Miller. Sergeant, you take the rest. Yes, sir. I'll take my men and go across to the far railing. You take yours and go along on this side. And watch for those wires. All right, get started, men. Hey, Captain, do you think they'll blow this bridge tonight? No, Sergeant. Jerry wouldn't do that to us. Not much. Privately, Mrs. Stringer, I had the same kind of feeling the sergeant had. I kept thinking they'd blow that bridge the minute we stepped on it. But the only thing that meant when we hit the roadway was... Jack, Marty, Marty! Boy, listen to that shrap. Hey, that stuff may not have our names on it, but it sure got our initials anyway. Flopping them right down in the middle of this thing. Oh, oh, oh that boy is walking down to meet us. Boy, Hitler won't be very proud of his bridge when that crowd gets through with it. Keep moving, man. Hey, Captain. Captain, look here. What is it? Wires. Demolition. Well, cut them. <clears throat> no, no, like this. Captain, they're blowing us up. No, it's just mortar fire. Stringer, cutting those first wires was like the kickoff at a football game. From then on, I wasn't quite so scared. I was too busy thinking about the job I had to do. And you found other riggings? Oh, yes. We kept cutting them every few yards. Those hineys really had that bridge wired, as we had reason to learn not so much later. But we found more than just wires. Captain, Captain, can you come here a minute? Coming right up. Sergeant, you okay? I'm okay. Here, right here. Take a look. Thermite. A thermite bomb. Yeah, what do we do with it? Throw it over? Oh, it'd have it go off and hit when it hits the water? That'd really give the jury the tip off. Now we gotta pull the fuse. Give me your pliers, Sergeant. Yeah, here they are, Captain. But for God's sake, take it easy. That thing may go off right in your face. There. There, I think I got it. Yeah, that's it. Here, Sergeant. Throw it in the river. Can't hurt anybody now. a lot more cautiously after that, feeling our way across like blind men. Then, when we were about three quarters of the way... Hey, hey, hey Captain! Look! Up there! Up it's ahead! the bridge on fire, it's Captain! blowing the bridge, Captain! They're blowing it! Easy! Take it easy! Nothing to worry about. It's just a fire set by those mortar shells. Relax! What, Captain? What are the flames spread to that hiney dynamite? Hey, look at that fire spread, Captain! What about it? Yeah, uh, well, we'll be trapped! Fire at this end, fire at the other end, and us in the middle. Don't worry about that fire back there. The one up ahead's the baby... Yeah, look at that thing spread. Boy, it's really getting hot. Ah, don't worry. This ain't half as hot as the place we're going. But listen to that stuff burn. Men, we're still about 50 feet from that fire. we got to keep going. Get as close as possible. If there's an opening anywhere, we'll go through. Come, Come on, on, let's go. Come on, boy. Those boys went on in, Mrs. Stringer, into a wall of fire. If there had been any openings, they would have found them. But as long as we couldn't get through on that end, my next move was to get the men off the bridge before the fire reached the dynamite, or we were trapped. They were the damn bravest men in the army, Mrs. Stringer. And you brought them all back? Yeah, we were lucky. You know, we scarcely had reached our side of the river, not more than five or ten minutes, when all of a sudden... <laughs> my story, I saw that bridge. 1,400 feet of twisted steel and powdered concrete sticking grotesquely up out of the water. I looked across the forbidding cliffs on the other side of the Rhine. I thought what a bloody job it would be to reach them. But we know now that a bridge across the Rhine has been taken. Taken by other men just as brave as these, bravest men in the army. You 
have just heard United Press correspondent Dan Stringer's gripping story of the men who crossed the Rhine. The story of the bravest men in the Army. Like Ann Stringer, hundreds of United Press correspondents are working in the smoke of battle on every fighting front and in the capitals of the free world, sending you the latest developments in the news. We will bring you another stirring story of these soldiers of the press soon. Be sure to listen, and listen for United Press News on the air. Look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. They are your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.